Let's shift our focus to India now, where banking is changing at a rapid pace. What's apparent is that innovation has different drivers there than in North America and Europe. And to update us on what's happening in India, we're joined by Mr. B. Raj Kumar, who is the Deputy Chief Executive of Indian Banks Association. Welcome to Cybus TV. Now, the Thanks. IBA's association uh, has been participating in Cybus for the last few years, and the delegation's been growing in numbers every year. Could you share your perspective, perhaps, on the value that Indian bankers derive from Cybos? Last 14 years, our Indian Bank Association is participating, and we are bringing always a delegation of senior bankers. Almost 50 people are coming every year. And this is actually an out-of-world you know, experience for them, because whatever you are doing in the bank, or uh, my feeling is even in no university can teach you a type of international experience, no, you, what you gain here, you will not get anywhere. No textbook can teach you. Or even working in the bank 24 hours also, you will not get this type of experience, meeting people, networking, you will not get. And one of the main themes of this year's Cybos is thriving in a hyper-connected world. And I'd like to get your perspective on this aspect because it is shaping the world of finance around the globe and especially in India. So what's your take on it? No, thriving, you know, there is a meaning flourishing. It's another synonym. So thriving in this, you know, totally computerized or digitized world. Yes, it is making life easy. But I would like to talk to you about the other side. All of you, us are very comfortable. It's a digital touch of a button. You are getting the money, but money can be put in the account. You can transfer the money anywhere across the world. That is happening. Same time, there is another dark side. You know, people 24 by 7, people are watching what is happening. They are working. They are trying to do, give you some cyber threats, it may come true also. Mm. Till today, nothing has happened. We cannot be very safe. Yes, we are very good. Our cyber security is safe like that. Nobody, no company, no bank, no country can talk about it because the next moment anything can happen. So mm. that threat is always there. Mm. They are working very hard and we have to outsmart them. Of course. What is the situation in India at the moment? Uh, how, how has banking in India evolved really in, in the last few years in terms of of technology? Uh, maybe I am the right person to tell you that. Uh, you know, I, when I joined the bank, absolutely, you will not believe me, there was not even a single computer in the, my bank. No computer? No computer. What year? In the 80s, this? I joined the bank. When I joined, you know, there was no calculator. And there is one we call a facet machine. And for totaling, we have to do like this. And we have to jot, you know, everything, you have to put it like this, wow. and you have to, like this, if you do, the total will come. Mm. That's what we were doing in 80s. Mm. Then slowly a big computer, I mean, not computer, a calculator came. Then the next step was uh, a advanced ledger posting machine like that. You cannot call it as a computer. It will only post you uh, whatever is there, credit, debit, it will post. Mm. That type of machine has come. And banks started telling that we are fully computerized you will find a branch of Indian bank fully computerized like that in bracket. You know what is fully computerized? Only the branch is computerized. It is not linked to any other branch. Mm. In that branch, computers are there and your accounts are all, you know, manually you are not doing it. That type of an improvement came. L later on, uh, after that, uh, we have come into uh, core banking solution. That means all the branches are connected. Mm. It, it's all networked. So you can uh, have an account here in, say, in X location. You can access from Y location also. You can draw the money. So one branch becomes a bank for you. This has happened recently, some 10 years back. This core banking, we call CBS. And you know ATM machines. ATM machines came maybe in 89, 1989 or something like that. You know that time an ATM machine used to cost around, in Indian rupees, 30 lakhs. Mm. Now it has come to three. And you know the ATM machine, if there is an ATM machine in the branch, money you can take only from that branch. You cannot take from any other branch. It was that situation. Mm. Then the switch came. Then all ATMs are connected. And you can now, you can take money from any bank, any ATM, a situation has come like that. So, so much of improvement has come. Mm. So that is a technology. And, and let's stay with the idea of technology because 
What are the areas that you feel require further technological advancements in Indian banking? No, after that, what has happened? Uh, internet banking started. Then you can sit at home and you can do all type of transactions. Mm -hmm. Then uh, next step was mobile banking. So bank is in your pocket now. And you know the consumer's behavior also has changed. You know, previously, any customer would like to come to the bank and do the transaction. They will come, sit there, and for taking cash, or you know, whatever, any transaction, they have to come to the bank. You know, the, now the present generation, younger generation of India, even if you take my son, he is banking now, he has not seen his branch. <laughs> everything is online. Mm. So this is the new generation of India. They want to do everything fast. They don't want anything else. Everything is online. Whether it is food or whether it is banking, <laughs> anything you purchase, or everything is online. Mm. Including, you know, get people are getting married online. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, uh, surprises nothing surprises us, us anymore. anymore no. <laughs> as, the, as the umbrella organization for the banks, what measures and initiatives is the IBA undertaking to improve trade processes currently? See, uh, you know about uh, the global uh, ranking, ease of doing business. India is at the 77th position. And our government of India has got a vision. We want to come in the top 50 now. So we won't want, our mantra is now today, digital India. Everything is digital. The government, you know, our Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, also is after everybody go digital, go digital only. And the digitalization in India, is whatever is happening, it is revolutionary. I don't think any other country, that much of financial inclusion has happened. So many accounts are happened. In the, the poorest to the poor has got an account now. Mm -hmm. They've they got a banking facility. So Indian Bank Association, what we are doing, we are also in the digital journey. So we are also, we want to make it everything totally digitization of banking. In the retail side, digitization has already happened. You know, individual accounts, everything is online now. But if you come to trade finance, still it is not paperless. So what happens, it consumes time, labor, and money. Mm. So that's what we are now focusing on. So we want to bring the trade finance also, uh, how to boost, uh, make it uh, you know, uh, paperless so that we can give a boost to the digital journey. This is the initiative we are now working on. And what plans does the IBA, the IBA have to, to help member banks adapt to rapid changes in technology and at the same time help them prepare for cyber threats because those cy cyber threats are changing? So there are, you know, initiative further, one more I want to tell. You know, I was talking about trade finance. Mm. So SWIFT India is there. SWIFT India is our partner now. Indian Bank Association, IBA and SWIFT, we are working together to go for a paperless banking as far as trade finance is concerned. There are three initiatives we have taken there. One, for that we have formed a working group in Indian Bank Association. There are some major banks, they are in the group. So this group has been made into three subcommittees, or you can call three subgroups. Each group is given one initiative. The first initiative is e-registration. Whenever you want to register anything, land or anything like that, no, what you can do online, you can do, the fee can be made, registration fee can be made online. But again, you have to wait for the receipt physically. And that physical receipt is to be pasted on that instrument. So what we are doing, we want to, the last bit of paper also should be eliminated. That's what we are working now. So we have been talking to all state governments in the India, mm -hmm. and Delhi government has already gone live now. We have made so many representations. Our team from IBA and SWIFT has gone and met the people who matter. Now Delhi government has given OK. So now other states we are approaching. The moment other states are all falling in line, it will be totally, you know, the registration will be done, e-registration only, online. That is the first initiative they are working on. Second one, you know, uh, people are uh, tra you know, transporting so many goods and all that. They'll discount the bills in the banks. There will be a set of transportation documents we would like to standardize them. So now we have introduced a GST tax system in India. Goods and service tax like that. It is one tax, one country now in India. So what is the development? We have got an e-way bill now. So e-way bill is a must because, because of this GST tax system. So what we are insisting, this e-way bill we will make it compulsory for any bill. So we have written to our central bank, that is Reserve Bank of India, why don't you make e-way bill mandatory? Then they told IBA can do it. 
we are not a regulator. Then we have all requested all our member banks, almost 150 banks are there. We have requested them, why don't you make it essential document, e-way bill. So what happens, the moment e-way bill is made essential, the invoices coming along with the e-way bill, you know, that can, SIFT can check whether the invoice, they, they make some code and all that, whether this invoice is already discounted in another bank. They can find out and tell us, the banks. So what happens, some people, what they'll do, the, with the same invoice in many banks, they'll get it discounted and take the money. So the moment we are joining hands with SIFT, this is eliminated. So there will not be any fraud as far as this is concerned. Banks are very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this is the second initiative. Third initiative, what we are doing, bank guarantees are being given. Bank guarantees, again, what no, again, paper guarantees to be given to the beneficiary. The issuer will have a copy, bank will have a copy. Though online, we can do it. Now we, because again, there is a stamp duty for it. So we want to make it e-bank guarantee. So electronically, the guarantee format can be passed on to the consumer, in, to the last man beneficiary. So this also we are working with SWIFT, all three. So here we have done a pilot project. So now again, we have to make a e-guarantee. You have to make change the regulations. Then only it will be legally, it will be tenable. So that part also now we are approaching the government. So th next before, next side was all these three will be done. So it will be totally paperless as far as trade finance is concerned. Speaking of looking ahead to the future, do you think in the coming years Indian banks can emerge as a major player globally? That's what happening now. You, the latest you may be knowing, uh, we have uh, 20 public sector banks. That is major stake with the government of India. Then they merged two banks. There is one bank of Maharashtra, I mean, sorry, uh, Dana Bank is there, Vijaya Bank. They got merged with Bank of Baroda. That's a very big global bank. Now what has happened? Ten banks, they are now making it into four banks. So we'll have only 12 banks now. So what happens? All small banks are getting merged with a bigger player. So what happens? There will be a scalability. And you, you know, a lot of resources are being wasted. We are all doing the same job. There are 20 banks are there. You find on the same street 20 government banks working on the same thing. So now, slowly, this is all coming down. Maybe, maybe after one or two years, there may be six banks only. And one will take care of international finance, another will take care of rural banking, another one will take care of agricultural banking. This is a, my personal opinion. This may happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, scalability, scalability is there, and the capital can be also conserved by the government, whatever capital they are giving. So these banks will become a major global player. Definitely, there will be a radical change in the Indian banking. It has already started now. Now, these banks will become, uh, 1st of April 2020, this is going to happen. Okay, interesting times ahead. Vibraj Kumar, we have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us on thank Cyboss you. Television. Thank you so we much. Have a great Cyboss week. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed talking to you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank All you. the very best. Have a good day. Hmm? Thank you. Okay.